All right, let's talk about the end times. And this is my favorite subject, um, at least one of my favorite subjects, right? So I like to see what other people are teaching and then sort of, you know, test it, right? To see, to see if they are from God. So let's take a look at this Jimmy Evans and let's take a little listen to what he has to say. Welcome to the Tipping Point Show. I'm Jimmy Evans. I'm so glad that you've joined me today. I have a teaching today called War Drums in Israel. I want to talk to you about the news that's going on right now and what the Bible says about two wars that are about to happen in Israel. There are major wars that are prophesied and what we have in the news today is telling us these wars are about to happen very soon. Before I Yeah, so uh, first of all, let's go uh, just, just so that we're clear. All right, Jesus talks about wars and rumors of wars in Matthew 24, Mark 13. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, see that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. And when ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be ye not troubled, for such things must needs be, but the end shall not yet be yet. So, uh, this is a great tactic if you want to scare people. Uh, fantastic. Uh, oh no, there's wars coming. It's prophesied. And this guy's going to tell you it's prophesied in the Old Testament. And it's, but it's not. Before I get into that, let me just remind you on September the 17th, uh, here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, Grapevine, Texas, five minutes from DFW Airport, we have a Bible prophecy conference happening from 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. September 17th at Fellowship Church, Pastor Ed Young, our dear friend there all day long and we have great speakers great content all day long to encourage you to let you know what's going on uh, here in the end times it's just it's, yeah, apparently you can't read your Bible you have to listen to these guys now keep listening just a very special format there of just really getting all day uh, in information and encouragement related to Bible prophecy I'll be speaking twice that day I'll also be speaking the next morning at Fellowship Church on Bible prophecy so if you attend the conference and you're able to stay over, you can... That's just that's just brilliant. A guy that has absolutely no understanding of Bible prophecy is going to speak, not once, but twice that day. And the, check, keep listening. Hear me again on Sunday morning. We also have Pastor Billy Crone, who's a regular guest here on the program. We have uh, Greg Laurie, who is a contributor to endtimes.com. He's written many books on the end times, ter terrific speaker, ter terrific content. We have Dr. Mark Hitchcock. He's written over 30 books on the end times. He is a contributor here to endtimes.com. He'll be speaking that day along with Pastor Ed Young, who is a terrific speaker, great pastor, great speaker, and Rabbi Jonathan Kahn, who is a dear friend of mine. You catch that? Terrific speaker, great pastor, great speaker, and Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. I, you know, sometimes I wonder, do people even read the Bible? Seriously. Matthew 23, verse 8. Jesus says, But be not ye called Rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. Did anybody, can anybody see that? It, it, do, should we just remove that out of the Bible and just pay attention to Jimmy Evans and Rabbi Jonathan Kahn? I mean, really, there's a problem here and you can't ignore it. All right, I, I'm not ignoring it. Be not ye called Rabbi. I don't care about what the Bible says. I'm going to call myself Rabbi anyway. On who is a dear friend of mine, who I believe is the most gifted prophet of our time. His books are most gifted prophet of our time, and he has no idea what Matthew 23 verse 8 says. Gross. Oh, good God Almighty me. I think he's the Antichrist. 
for bestsellers. He has revelation that is off the charts incredible and, and accurate. And so he'll be there bringing a special message. And so it's $99 a person. To there, boom, there it is. $99 a person. You can hear these false prophets fill your head with all kinds of junk. 100 bucks. Man, no, 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 not 100 bucks. It's only 99 bucks. Well, that's not so bad, is it? 99 bucks? And it's $49 for the live stream. And 40 and an additional $49 or 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 is it just 49 if you're not able to 10? I'm I'm sorry about that. Go ahead. We want to give you a 20% discount. We know Oh, we 20% discount. So you don't have to pay $90. You only have to, or $99. You only have to pay $80 or you don't have to pay $50. You only have to pay $40. That's no oh, fantastic deal right there. You're making money already. We have a lot of subscribers to YouTube on our YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed, hit that button and subscribe right now. We want to give you twenty percent discount. No, you don't want to give them twenty percent discount. You want the eighty bucks or the forty bucks. You want the money, is what you want. Give me the money, right? Yeah, so you get twenty percent off of the ninety nine, twenty percent off of the forty nine. We would love to have you be there in person. We would love for you to give us that money. You can't. We would love to have you live streaming in. So you can go on conference .com right now. Enter into your promo code there. You'll get twenty percent off. Conference. Oh, you get twenty percent off. All right, twenty percent off of dot times dot com. The information is right there on your screen. Sign up. We have a lot of people already signed up, so we want you to sign We're up. We're making a lot of money, fellas. We're making a lot of money right now. You can use your discount, by the way, to bring family, oh, friends. Oh, discount! You get the twenty percent off. You get the discount, and you're making money. Neighbors, bring a bus load from your church. You can all use your. We'll just bring a whole bus load of people, man. That's a thousand dollars right there. Your discount code there. So we're going to have a lot going on that day. We would love to have you be a part of that. Let me, let me remind you also of the book that we have. Where are the missing people? This is a book that you leave on your coffee table, dining room table. Where are the missing people? What's this book about? Car, office, apartment, dorm, dorm room for people who are left behind in the rapture. People that are left behind in rapture you know what happens don't you the people that are left behind they're all killed every one of them there is no chance for those that are left behind to be saved the number one question that's going to be asked after the rapture is where are the missing people the number one question that's going to be asked after the rapture are, where are the missing people? If you're asking that question, buddy, you're in trouble. Big, big trouble. And this book is going to be there answering it, leading people to Christ and letting them know what's about to happen and how to prepare for it. And if you go on Amazon, we have hundreds of five-star reviews of this book. And you can see those reviews there, but a lot of people are reading it right now, giving it to loved ones, and they're getting saved, their lives are being changed. And so it's not just for later. Many people are reading it right now, and it's changing their lives. So where are the missing people? You can go on Amazon. You can also go to missingpeoplebook.com. And if you're buying more than one copy, we give you some great discounts there. Oh, hey, there you go. You buy 10, for, buy 10 books, you get 10% off. Man, that's fantastic. Making money. Missing people. So let me get into this teaching today on war drums. In Israel, we live in a very, very serious time, and I know that all of us, all of us, all of us feel the oppression of what's going in the world right now, and not just related to Israel, but just economically, you know, the pandemic, the evil and wickedness in the world, China, Russia, the, the war in Ukraine, the United States, all the things that are happening, it is oppressive. I mean, there, this is something I've never experienced before. And I'm 68 years old. I've never experienced anything like this. What's going on in the world right now? I never thought I would live to see what's going on in the world right now. But it's happening, and it's a fulfillment of Bible prophet. Yeah, that's in that. You know what? That's true. That uh, things will be getting worse and worse, and they are getting worse and worse. Let's see, and according to Bible prophecy, there are two major wars that are about to happen in Israel. That's that. There you go. You just fell off the cliff, and now you're going into the realm of BS. 
and I think they'll happen very, very soon, especially the first one. Oh, God. Well, I better buy your book, hadn't I? Because this BS that you're selling me right now is not in the Bible. And one of the wars is the Gog and Magog war. No, it's not. No, it's not. What, what you're talking about here, what you're talking about here is in Ezekiel 38 and 39. All right, so if you do a search for Gog, um, you see that in First Chronicles it talks about um, the sons of Joel, Shimei, Shimei. I can't say I can't talk. Um, Shimei, his son. Gog, his son. Shammai, his son. Okay, so uh, that's just going through a genealogy. But here in, in Ezekiel 38, uh, I encourage it takes five minutes to read one chapter. Alright, and then of course um, in Ezekiel 39. So I have no problem Let's say if we go to, I thought about reading this. Uh, my concern is people won't read this. It takes five minutes to read it. But if you really care, read it, and you'll see. I have no problem with people saying, well, this is here talking about uh, the end of the world. Okay, now I don't have any problem with that. What I have a problem with is when you go to chapter 39, and it's talking about uh, cleaning out the land and burying uh, the, the, the people of Gog and in the valley of Hammon God. That, that's already happened. That's long. That's, all this is happened way long time ago before the baby Jesus. All right. That's, I have a problem saying, well, that's going to happen in the future. Man, these futurists will take Old Testament fulfilled um, events and then project them into the future. And the, it'll never happen. I guarantee it. You can earmark this and study this every single day, and it's never going to happen. The, this idea that there's going to be a war in Israel, the 1948 Israel. Now, keep in mind that this Israel that he's speaking of, Israel, um, I don't, is that even different? I'm not sure. I don't care. So, whatever this thing that he's talking about, that's never going to happen. This idea that Gog and Magog is going to make war with Israel. here you know tomorrow or next week or in a couple of years or 10 years or 20 it's never gonna happen he's gonna sell books he's gonna sell fear and the idea oh no this is Bible prophecy this is gonna happen no it's not gonna happen what's gonna happen is you're gonna sell your book and people are gonna buy it that's the only thing that's gonna happen all right, so the, here, and here's the problem. So what do we see? The Valley of Hamangog. So I just wanted to share this. Uh, you know, the Valley of Hamangog is where they bury these guys. And um, buries five, six. Okay, yeah, that's right. So he keeps a sixth of the army. All right, and... All right, so the, there's really nothing here. These are just images I want to show, and this it's all speculation. I wasn't there. This is this is all in the past. Doesn't really it doesn't matter now. The what the problem is here you're equating Revelation 20 with uh, this idea. Okay, that's uh, that's a big problem. All right, so let's go to Revelation 20. And we hear, or we see, we read, verse 4, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads, or in their hands, 
and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Okay, so what am I looking for here? So we keep going down. All right, so when the a thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Now, I, I've explained this before, but just so you can get the image in your head, this is very simple. It's not rocket science. So when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, we that are saved are lifted up to be with the Lord in the air. And first, the dead in Christ are risen, and then those of us that are alive and remain are lifted up with them. So all of us that are saved, all of us that have ever been saved, we are lifted up to be with the Lord. And that's when our enemy is gathered at our feet. All right, and so when that's when the enemy is gathered at our feet and uh, f fire comes down from God out of heaven and destroys them all. This is the separation. This is the judgment day. This is the separating the, the wheat from the tares, the harvest. All right, the end of the world. Okay, and... When the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Now this ain't going to be much of a battle because they're going to get utterly destroyed. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about the, in the bluff city. And, fire, and the bluff city is going to be up in the air. All right. And the saint, the camp of the saints, we're up in the air at this point. And fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them. We're not on the earth when fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them. We're up in the air with the Lord Jesus, just as we're told all throughout the Bible. It, going all the way back to Genesis 3, all right, all the way back to Genesis 3. Oh my goodness. Imagine if I could type. And oh, what's that? Uh, bruise thou. It shall bruise thy head. Talking about Jesus shall bruise your head. Talking about uh, Satan. Satan's head will be bruised. And Satan's head will bruise the heel of Jesus Christ. This is the same thing we're reading. It's parallel. What we're reading here in verse 9, in Revelation 20, verse 9, and fire came down from God out of he heaven and devoured them. Okay, this is the same thing. Parallel. It's, it's written different. It's said in a different way. But it's talking about the very same thing. And we're seeing this all throughout the Bible. All right, this is not a one-time thing like a lot of people want to pretend it's not it's all throughout the Bible if we go to Psalm 110 the Lord said unto my Lord sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool that's when we are up in the air with the Lord Jesus our enemies gathered at our feet and fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them all and this is all throughout the Bible and the Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my, on my right hand, till I make thine enemies thy footstool. And this is exactly what's going on. We are up in the air with the Lord Jesus Christ at the last trump, when the trumpet shall sound, and we are changed in the twinkling of an eye. All right, 1 Corinthians, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. And another one, another verse that makes this very simple. Um, let's do it this way. Uh, what is it? First uh, Thessalonians 4. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first, then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with 
these words. So when this is happening, we are up in the air, when fire comes down, the fire coming down from God is the wrath of God. It's when the wickedness of the world is destroyed forever. All right, very simple stuff, okay? So when it talks about, uh, where is this at? In verse 8, and, and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, together them together to battle. When that happens, we're up in the air with the Lord Jesus Christ. All right? This is after the sound of the trumpet. All right? And just like what we read in Matthew 24, there'll be a sound of the trumpet when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. This is when we are lifted up in the air. All right? And so when we are up in the air the enemy is gathered at our feet this is not going to be broadcast on CBS on NBC ABC CNN and Fox News you're not going to if you're seeing this on the news buddy you're in big trouble big big trouble all right big 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 trouble all right it's not something you want to see on television. All right, but look, I get it. These guys are making a lot of money. Huh? Making a lot of money. People are buying it up. And they're going to keep selling it. People are going to keep buying it. And they're going to keep wearing these nice suits. And getting these nice haircuts. And I get it. But. The issue I have is none of what you're selling is true that's the problem I have and, and we see uh, all these people teaching nonsense and this is you again isn't it yep the perfect red heifer yeah I've been hearing this for the last how many years since since I was a believer I saw I think it was uh, it might have been Hal Lindsey or somebody talking about the perfect red heifer like the perfect sacrifice the perfect sacrifice the unblemished unspotted sacrifice not not realizing not understanding the very simple gospel of Jesus Christ that Jesus himself is the perfect sacrifice there is no nothing in the Bible about a perfect red heifer that is going to come and replace the sacrifice that our Lord Jesus Christ has already made. This to me shows me that this guy is no Christian at all. He's feeding off of Christians that are gullible and they don't read their Bible and they don't understand nothing. They're not reading their Bible, they're listening to people like this. This is unbelievable. But this is happening, and this is not a new thing. This has been happening for a long time, and it's only getting worse and worse. And it, and it, we're living in a world where it's almost impossible to know what the truth is, except God show it to us. So that's what I want to encourage you all, to read the Word of God, because God is showing us in the Word of God. All you have to do is read the Bible and believe the words that you're reading are from God when you have faith in the Word of God that's when the understanding comes all right so uh, I think that's all I wanted to share on that I mean for crying out loud this guy this guy spent four minutes of the first four minutes and 17 seconds trying to get you to give him money I'm not going through the next 27 minutes or whatever 27 20 uh, that's good enough right there, fellas. If you have any thoughts, maybe I'm not being fair. If I'm not being fair, just let me know. Call me names. I don't care. I like to. Uh, I like your opinions. Appreciate them. Have a good day.